Liz Garbus, the director of the second most successful documentary in Netflix history, Harry and Meghan, spoke to Vanity Fair and I wanted to share with you what she said. Clearly, she took the royal family hateful trolls to the cleaners, my family. And just hear what she had to say about all of this, my family. Now, Harry and Meghan director, Liz Garbus, wanted to connect the dots to larger historical issues. The Oscar-nominated filmmaker primarily focuses on stories of social justice. She includes the plight of Harry and Meghan in that category. Now, when director Liz Garbus partnered with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry to direct their six-part docuseries on Netflix, Harry and Meghan, each party had different primary objectives. Now, Garbus said this in a quote. They suddenly did see this documentary and do see it as very much their love story. Liz Garbus, who has directed more than 30 non-fiction projects in a 25-year career, including the Oscar-nominated films The Farm Angola, USA, and What Happened, Miss Simone, on a Zoom from London, told Vanity Fair, and I quote, their interest was very much in telling their love story from their point of view, as opposed to the love story as told by others, and to share their personal archive in order to have that look behind the curtain. Liz Garbers said, damn my family. Now my family, it is no secret what Prince Harry and Meghan have been through. And what the love story has been through, my family. And for quite a long time, as you all know, their story has been seen from the lens of the UK tabloid media. Harry and Meghan wanted to change that. You know? Now my family, for Garbus, the daughter of a famed First Amendment lawyer and a therapist who has devoted a career to social justice related projects and nuanced portraits of complicated individuals, it was crucial for the Rocky series to probe deeper than the raw couple's romance and woes of a fractured fairy tale. And Liz Garber said that for me, what was really important was to connect the dots to these larger historical issues, referencing these storylines about racism, colonialism, and how important white supremacy has been to the British Empire monarchy. And my family, speaking about this, my family, we have heard even the carnival of so-called experts like Dan Wooten say that members of the royal family should be whiter than white. And I'm quoting Dan Wooten's exact words in his article that he wrote for the Daily Fail. My family, clearly, we all know who that article was meant for. It was meant for Meghan Markle. To say that she does not belong. Why? Because she is not whiter than white as they want her to be. And yet, the likes of Dan Wooten go on TV and say, What racism? What racism? What racism? Yet, the UK media have never been able to hide their racism towards Meghan. Never. Not once. My family. So I'm glad that even by their own words, really, they keep exposing themselves to the entire world. And Meghan and Harry are proven right time and time again. Now, speaking about Harry and Meghan, 
Liz Garber said that they were, to their credit, very open and willing to journey down some of the paths that they might not have originally considered. The love story is a spine, but for me, it was always necessary to connect the dots to the personal story and the larger historical context, you know? And given the public's interest in Harry and Meghan, even especially after the couple pulled away from official royal duties, Garbus was well aware that the Rookie series would be her most anticipated project yet. And my family, it is worth noting what Harry said. They left the UK, you know, and they were quiet for like one year. And despite them being quiet for one year, still, the media, the farm, they never ever stopped leaking anti-Harry and Meghan stories. They kept pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. Eventually, Harry and Meghan were fed up. And yes, they shared their story and they did the right thing. You can only take so much. Now, Gabba said that, you know, obviously, I knew walking in there was going to be extraordinary interest. And Miss Liz Garbus of the Rookie series, which was part of a reported $100 million production deal that Harry and Meghan signed with Netflix. Just being aware of the microscope of the film was a challenge. And when it was released on December the 8th, Harry and Meghan proved such a media event that it broke Netflix viewership record for unscripted content with 81.55 million hours watched in the first week. This second week, viewing time climbed to 97.7 million hours. It was exciting that people stuck with it. Even with the sort of critical perspective I tried to bring to the story says Liz Garbus. And my family, though the series was gobbled up by millions of households, its subjects to the UK press remain so polarizing that even reviews of Harry and Meghan seem to sometimes confuse analysis of the documentary with opinions of the couple. Varati wrote that, and I quote, there is an air of duty about the entire enterprise of Harry and Meghan, as if they are honor-bound to keep reciting their personal story until we eventually lose interest, they said. My family, kindly let's discuss this part that Varati has said, really. You know, my family, I get what's happening, you know, with the media, they like to talk about Harry and Meghan so many times that perhaps they want to be fed up with Harry and Meghan content. And that's why they're saying, saying this really, my family. That's why they're saying this really, my family. But the thing is, as long as the royal family keeps on leaking stories, anti-Harry and Meghan stories, as long as they can probably press Keep going after Meghan and Harry. You can't expect Harry and Meghan to be quiet. People love to hear from Harry and Meghan. People love to hear Harry and Meghan's love story. They love to hear it. And no wonder, my family, Harry and Meghan, their docuseries on Netflix became the second most successful documentary ever in Netflix's entire history, my family. That is something I'm proud of that Harry and Meghan were able to achieve my family. I'm very, very happy and proud about that. So people aren't going to be fed up with, you know, content pertaining to Harry and Meghan. You know, what they want really is that people are fed up with what Harry and Meghan have to say and not what the media has to say about 
Harry and Meghan. That's what they want, really. They want to be the one who control the narrative. They don't want Harry and Meghan to control the narrative, to tell their story themselves. No, that's not what they want. The media wants to be the only ones with access, with the ones controlling the narrative, the story. They want to be the ones who exploit it themselves and not Harry and Meghan controlling the narrative. And that's why my family, you know, they want to be fed up with Harry and Meghan talking about their personal story, their life really, what they've been through. Now, my family, I'll say what Liz Garbus also said, my family. How can people be upset that Harry and Meghan want to tell their own story, but however, be happy to click onto lies being spread against Harry and Meghan? My family, that's completely unacceptable, really. Unacceptable. No one will be happy if they are lied about. Nobody. You know, nobody. My family. And the article reads that feedback in the UK was especially vitriolic. You know, and we all know where it came from. From the UK tabloid media. With the series dubbed a very Californian exercise in grievance. A tedious, narcissistic wallow, they said. And a one-sided PR effort to those naysayers, Gabas offered a pointed response. Now hear what Gabas said about this. It's important to hear this part. Just as I've told you. And I quote, People are very happy to read anything about Harry and Meghan when it's somebody else writing about them. No wonder, you know, the reason the UK press keep writing articles about Harry Megan, negative articles, is because it makes them money. They get so much money. I remember in the Harry and Megan documentary where Megan said that they are making a fortune off of us, Megan said that in the Harry and Megan documentary. Because, yes, the total media are making a fortune off of Harry and Meghan, telling lies about them, hounding them. How can someone be okay, be happy to read lies being told about Harry and Meghan by UK press, but be unhappy when Harry and Meghan are saying that enough with the lies, we are going to tell the truth. You know, my family. And I am glad what Liz Gabba said. You know, I'm very, very happy with what she said, really. That people are very happy to read everything about Harry and Meghan when it's somebody else writing about them because those people are the ones exploiting Harry and Meghan. They don't want Harry and Meghan to tell their own story. They want, you know, tell the story of Harry and Meghan from the lens of the UK television media. That is completely unacceptable. No, 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 no. When Harry and Meghan left, because the media hounding, it led to Harry and Meghan fleeing from the UK for their safety and sanity. When they left, the media should have stopped. It should have, really. But they never, ever stopped. They never, ever stopped going after Harry and Meghan. They never, ever should have ever hounded Meghan Markle, but that's what they did. And when the hounding made them leave, made, made Harry and Meghan leave, it should have, they should have woken up and said what we did was wrong. They should have come to terms with what they did was wrong. They went too far and stopped, but they didn't stop. They kept on throwing threats. From Fifth Street, they say that, you know, Harry and Meghan can expect no mercy following decision to go rogue and quit. That's what they said. When Harry and Meghan quit after a toxic environment created by the UK media itself, then they wondered, why are they leaving? And they thought that Meghan would leave alone. That was okay to them. But never 
Do they think that Harry would leave? And Harry said that that is embarrassing for, for some people because Harry left. It's embarrassing because this idea that they keep promoting about their own family being an idealized family life, people should aspire to get to that. That's the pinnacle of the class system in the UK. When they left that system, people in the UK began, began to question is that really worth it, really? And that, that, those questions are what is, you know, embarrassing, really, for some people. Very, very much embarrassing for the UK press and even for the farm itself. My family, Harry and Megan chose love and I applaud them for doing just that, my family. Liz Gabba said that, but when Harry and Megan want to tell their own story in their own words, it suddenly becomes an issue. People are not forced to watch a documentary. It is not going to be required in school. It is your choice what you binge and what you don't binge. She said. There have been more documentaries and books written about Harry and Meghan that Harry and Meghan have produced themselves and that is the truth and nothing but the truth and the media have been selling that on TV. You have people who have never met Meghan being invited to Good Morning Britain when asked have you met Meghan? They say no I haven't but this is the truth about Meghan Marco. I mean come on and people are okay with that but when Harry and Meghan want to tell their own story, it's no, we are not happy about that. We are angry about that. How dare they? I thought they wanted privacy. Yet even when Meghan is not visible right now, you've seen with your own two eyes what happens. UK media are asking, where is Meghan Markle? You know? My family. Daily Fail also. My family. Asked. Where is Meghan Markle? They're all looking for Meghan Markle when she's not visible, my family. You know? That is what they're doing, really. When they don't see Meghan, they complain. When they do see Meghan, they also complain. But let me say this, that they do want to see Meghan Markle because they want someone... To, to abuse my family. That is what, you know, they are looking for. And Daily Mail, it's clickbait title for an article, The Disappearing Duchess. My family, when Megan is not visible, but yet, when she is visible, it's like, I thought they want privacy. My family, because they can't stand any idea of Harry and Megan profiting from telling their own story. They want to be the ones who are in charge of the narrative. They want to be the ones who exploit members of the royal family. Even those who have left, like Harry and Meghan, they still feel entitled to exploit them. Actually, not entitled. That is what they're doing. Exploiting them. My family. That, my family, I find completely unacceptable, really. Unacceptable. Now, Liz Garbus also said that, you know, so I think that it is an interesting kind of pearl clutching that does not quite add up with the public's appetite for reading stuff about Harry and Meghan from other people. The reason why it does not add up is because the UK media are the ones who want to be able to tell Harry and Meghan's story from their lens, from the tabloid media's lens itself, they want to control the narrative. They want to profit off of Harry and Meghan. They don't want Harry and Meghan to profit off of talking about their lives, their own family. That is not what the media owned by the Maddox Rothmayers want, my family. Remember, covering the royal family is a very, very big business for the tabloid media. You know? And that's why 
they have this re relationship with the monarchy, really. So my family, though she was not a royal watcher, Liz Gabba says that, says that making the documentary was at times a surreal immersion exercise into the alleged palace mind games Harry and Meghan described to her. For instance, Buckingham Palace said that we did not reach out for comment on the docu series when we did, says Gabbas. They did that to discredit us, and by discrediting us, they can discredit the content of the show. We lived through some of those moments that were a little bit like Alice through the looking glass. You know, my family, Liz Gabas has gotten a chance to see what Harry and Meghan have had to endure all of these years, my family. The toxicity, the racism, the bigotry of the UK media, the harassment, the hounding, and the lies also from the palace. You know, my family, Buckingham Palace was reached out to by, the, by Netflix to comment on the show. Then they say they lied that Netflix had not reached out to them. What a bunch of lies and liars that they are that they are there. So people want to be fed lies from liars. And then later on, they did accept they did the work conducted. My family, how can anyone support such liars really? And people want to hear Harry and Megan stories from them, from liars. It's completely unacceptable. My family, unacceptable, really. Liz Gabas also said that another moment came when British TV presenter Jeremy Clarkson published a hate fueled column for The Sun shortly after the release of the second half of the series, which highlights the negative and unfair press coverage of Meghan. Clarkson described dreaming of the day when Meghan is made to parade naked through the streets of every town in Britain while the crowds chant shame and throw lumps of excrement at her, says Liz Garbus. That was an extreme example. That was an extreme example of the kind of coverage they have been getting. I certainly lived through it a bit my family Liz Gabbers has never been a role watcher but even she was horrified when she saw that level of hate my family and they expect and think that Megan to just shut up and just take it but if you put through even one of them it just, it just through just a fraction a fraction of what they Dish out to Meghan Markle. They won't like it. They'll cry foul. You'll see tears from them. Why? 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 They have dehumanized Meghan Markle so much, my family, that they don't see her as a human being. That even when Clarkson lied that he had apologized to Harry and Meghan, he had only sent an email to Harry, not to the woman he abused. And he confirmed exactly what Harry and Meghan were talking about in the Harry and Meghan documentary. He confirmed everything about the victory of the hate campaign. It's wrong, it's evil, it's cruel. No one can survive it, really. No one should ever have to put up with that. My family, nobody. And then when you speak up about the abuse, they complain. And then they prove your point. We all saw how Megan was pleading for her life. Saying this was, and I quote, to the UK media, to trolls online, to colonists. And I quote Megan's words, you are making people want to kill me. It is real. Waking up in the middle of the night, checking the doors are locked. That is not a game. 
That is real. Are the kids safe? Megan's words. Are the kids safe? And despite hearing all of that, Jeremy Clarkson still incited violence against Meghan Markle, confirming exactly what Meghan said. My family, no one should ever have to endure this. And people should be held, held accountable for this kind of evil, vile rhetoric. This is not free speech, it is hate speech. And there is a difference between free speech and hate speech. Hate speech is completely unacceptable. You know, but in the UK, it is the order of business there, my family. Sad, really. Sad, sad, really. You know? Now, given Harry and Meghan publicly stated social justice mission, aligning with Garbus was a savvy move. Meghan and Garbus had first gotten to know each other when Garbus consulted on another production on Netflix under the Raw Couples Artful Productions banner, PAL. Then since shelved, then since shelved animated series about a 12-year-old girl who travels through time to meet important women across history. Now, Liz Garber says that there was already some trust there. Her and Megan's decision to collaborate on the docuseries. Early on, we had conversations. They understood things that were extremely important to me about other things so that they would not be misinterpreted, Garbas said my family. So I'm glad that they so I am glad that they picked Garbas to be the director for their movie series that Harry Megan picked Liz Garbas to be the director of their docu series. What a remarkable, fantastic choice, really, my family. Now, my family, let me read a couple of comments on this. Now, someone said that they assumed that their media propaganda machine was capable of discrediting a veteran documentary producer. The firm is not ready for the new media landscape. The documentary and Harry's memoir expose the royal family and UK media abuse and propaganda. Now, someone called Emily said that every lie they tell is being debunked directly by the person involved. But the firm uses sources to constantly lie, my family. You know, that is what they normally, normally do, my family. But what really, really captivated me, really, was what she said, really. My family about people wanting to hear stories about Harry and Meghan from tabloid media, but not from Harry and Meghan. People are willing to hear lies, the trashing of Harry and Meghan by the UK media, but not the truth from Harry and Meghan. Listen, some people must be reminded that Harry and Meghan are human beings. They have feelings, they have emotions. Meghan is a mother of two children and they lost one child. My family, some people must be reminded of what happened, really. This is not a game. Lives have been lost. And as Megan said, today she's the target. But tomorrow, it could be you. It could be your daughter. Your, your granddaughter, even. So, don't be excited when you see what's happening and then keep quiet and be silent and say that, oh, look, they are just targeting Meghan Markle. They will never ever target me. Don't think like that. Tomorrow, it could be you. Tomorrow, it could be me. So don't be too happy when you see lies being told about someone. Be someone who says, no, no, no. These are lies and fights against lies that are being told about Harry and Meghan. You know? Now, someone said that Harry and Meghan telling their story 
becomes a problem as some UK people believe those writing books on Harry and Meghan are experts. It does not matter that they have never spoken to Harry and Meghan. They don't want to hear the truth. In fact, they find it an affront that they dare tell the truth. You know, my family, I also like that explanation. Very much true. You know, someone else that, because people that dislike Harry and Meghan want affirmation of their biases and envy. They need a reason to hate and blame Meghan Markle and evaluate this disturbingly disproportionate anger towards her. They cling to third party information, propaganda of unnamed and anonymous sources. Someone called Harvey said that, my family. Indeed, very much true. Let me say this on that. Megan is a good person. Every single person who has ever met Megan Markle has only but spoken good things about Megan Markle. My family. Everyone. When Megan was accused of bullying, her suits cast came out guns blazing to defend Meghan Markle from the lies of the farm. A couple of days ago, Wendell Pierce called out lies being told about, you know, Meghan Markle using his name. And the hater who was spreading those lies, quoting Tom Boas, this role expert's book, had to delete, delete those tweets. Because their lies were exposed. My family. So, my family, Megan is a good person. Don't allow the UK media to tell you otherwise, my family. And I'm glad that more and more people are speaking about, you know, what they have seen with their own two eyes, what Liz Garbus even saw about the palace's mind games. You know, and the lies the palace willing to sell to the public, to the media, to the tabloid media, who are happy to grasp and at those lies. And then they were spread on TV platforms. The palace said this, and then the palace changed tune and said, yes, they did receive a response, uh, you know, a message from Netflix, an email from Netflix, right after lying. Why are people okay with that? You know, why? If someone lied about you, you'd not want that lie to stick. You wouldn't want that lie to fester on the minds and hearts of people. So then why do you think that Megan should just put up and shut up and take it? Megan is a human being. And like all human beings, Megan has feelings. And she deserves to be treated with basic human rights. And she has a right to be treated with basic human dignity. My family, with that and so much more, stay tuned to our next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and support our evergreen family on YouTube. And kindly stay tuned to our next video. God bless Harry, Megan, Archie, and Lil Bedana and Dora Douglas. Stay tuned to our next video. Love you, all than forever. What do you think about what Liz Gabbers said, my family? I want to your opinion on that kindly. Please stay tuned. To our next video. Love you always and forever.